Hi everyone, welcome to my very quick and simple binding tutorial. I'm using my Juki MCS 1500. I like to keep my tensions a little bit above the four. I've already found the ideal placement for my binder. I use a generic one that I purchased uh, via a Facebook group I found. You'll want to have it set up so that your presser foot does not touch the binding attachment. You can adjust the position using the screws and you can also adjust where the back feed is um, using these top screws, which is really great. Um, you'll start off by placing your binding strip into the binder. I like to use my little tweezers to easily push it through and kind of grab it and make sure that it's in the ideal position. There we have it. I have had it out now. Now I'll continue to use my tweezers and adjust um, the binding to make sure that it's in the ideal position. I like to place it directly underneath the needles. I'm not sure if this is how everybody starts it off, but this works for me. So I'll place it underneath the needles and we'll get the binding started. Just a few little stitches should do. You don't want to waste too much of the binding, but you want to make sure that it's coming out well and that it's well seated underneath the presser foot. Give it a few more stitches. Now you'll take your other main fabric right side up and you'll want to feed it through the center of the fold. Again, you get it started slowly, make sure that it's in the right position. You always want to check on the side too to make sure that your binding's not twisting. A lot of people like to roll it around like um, a wooden dowel and have it in a cup or something like that. I'm not binding a lot of stuff right now. I'm just doing the bottom of this dress, so it'll be fine without it. You continue on this way, slowly. Make sure that everything's good. You'll want to check your back. Make sure that it's in the right position. Now sometimes you'll see that you can go slightly off the center. Some people put like a Lego block or something to make sure that it's feeding properly. It's looking really good so far. The stitches are catching the back edge of the binding, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Again, if it doesn't, you can adjust by moving it slightly to the sides or even using those top screws to make some small adjustments so that you get the exact finished product that you want. Now you see that we can kind of see a little gap that the needles can potentially go off. I like to use my tweezers to gently nudge it back into the right position before it comes off the overlap right there. Once you've done that, you can continue sewing, periodically checking to make sure that you're not going off. Now for neckbands and such, you don't really need long bindings, but sometimes you do. So you have two ways of doing this. Um, you can either do it the same way that you make a bias tape, but I've also done it this way and it works just fine. You'll want to connect just right sides together um, the same long strip and sew it, make sure you're back stitching. A pretty short stitch. Make sure to back stitch. Keep going. It doesn't really matter if you're not using a seam allowance right now because we're gonna trim it in the next step. Back stitch again, and you're done. I trimmed it very close to the edge, uh, leaving about an eighth of an inch. 
you'll notice that when you're feeding it through, you might have a little bit of difficulty. I like to use my tweezers again, just to make sure that it's not pulling on the binding that's being sewn. You don't want any wrinkles. I've reached the end of my binding right here, and you can see where I joined at the seam. It's really hardly noticeable, and you wouldn't notice at all really on the edge of a skirt. You close off your stitches, or you just release the tension like I did here. You pull out a little bit of the strip, and you're just going to go ahead and cut it off. Now I'm going to show you how I attach it together with the serger. It's really simple, but I have a little trick too at the end. I trim off the excess, and then here I like to either put a little piece of Wonder Tape if I'm really, really not wanting it to slide, but I find tweezers also gets a really nice finished even joining to it. So now we'll take it out of the machine and tuck in our serger tail and then we check to make sure everything's nicely aligned. I've tucked in my tail ends, I've hammered down the seam, and I did a triple stitch just to keep it all nicely aligned. And that is how I finish off my binding. And there you have it, a beautiful binding on a dress.